Good afternoon, everyone. NASA states that May 2016 was the warmest on record. I mean, wait, uh, second warmest global temps dropping. Overview of all the global temperature stations on the planet, but there's only 13 for the entire continent of Antarctica. I highlighted in blue, despite the satellites reporting that it was less warm than May, hey, we're NASA, we're going to tell you it's the warmest year ever. University of Huntsville, Alabama satellite temperatures showing decrease. Low ice, low snow, both poles plunging toward record low. Wait a second, Antarctica's gaining ice. Greenland ice sheet not melting nearly as quickly as they're saying. Last year was the shortest melt season on record in the Arctic. 2016, still above the 2012 melt. Notice the asterisk at Barrow, Alaska. Cryosphere shows no ice along the coast. Yet this is the view from the Barrow Sea Cam. NASA claiming May 2016, the warmest May on record, and that Arctic sea ice plunging toward record lows, potentially setting the stage yet further down in the article. However, a cool summer in the Arctic could actually negate the melt rate. They covered themselves, so whatever happens, they still said we said it. NSIDC, ice plunging toward record low. They conveniently forget 2015 had the shortest melt season on record in the Arctic. And the 2016 values are right within the 2012 melt rate. Antarctica, right at the even level. The Greenland ice sheet not melting nearly as quickly as they forecast. Arctic sea ice, 2012, 2016, same. Several charts showing the same thing. And if we jump back in time into the 1920s and 30s, you'll see that we're repeating a cycle again. Modis. Arctic sea ice composite. I put an asterisk right where Barrow, Alaska is. Go a little bit south of there. You'll see that blank area here for you on the map so you can match it up. Cryosphere showing no ice up there. Yet this is what the Barrow sea ice cams are showing along the coast. Definitely still ice horizon to horizon. Low ice, low snow, both poles. Yet the sea ice anomaly shown here is at least above the other low five years. And when we look at the global sea ice extent over the last 40 years, it stays in that same range. Antarctica is increasing in ice content. That's actually NOAA's own article. When we look at all the seas combined, it's within the parameters that it always has been. Warmest May on record. Despite the satellites reporting that it's not the warmest May, yet NASA says it is, so we're just supposed to believe them. They don't even use fact. They just tell you something now. Oh, I mean, it's really the second warmest May. And I like how they even include El Nino impact. So they even show there's natural cycle variability in the temperature records. If you didn't know how the surface temperatures are derived, these are all the reporting stations globally. Across the sea, they say it's the warmest ever sea surface temperatures, but this is all the reporting buoys that are out there. Antarctica is supposed to be the warmest ever, yet there's only 13 stations across an entire continent. Look at most of the globes, not even covered. So how can they have such precise measurements down to a thousandth of a degree? Absolutely impossible. Southern Hemisphere tracking lowers. La Nina intensifies. That's across the entire globe. University of Huntsville, Alabama, satellite temperatures down. Yet another report, those same University of Huntsville, Alabama's second warmest on May, yet NASA keeps saying it's the warmest ever. Rundown of the 30-year average. Yet May is only 1 55th of a degree. Jumping back to the April temperatures, 0.71. And all this time we've been told by the IPCC that we would be warming 2.78 degrees, when in actuality we're not even around 1 degree increase. And then the satellite measurements of global temperature, they put it down to 1 1,000th of a degree. How can you be that precise? The lower tropospheric temperatures, notice where the green is in the northern hemisphere. That's where we grow our crops, North America, Europe, and Russia. Abrupt climate change, they forget to tell you that there's all this variability, and there has been for 10, 20, 50, 100,000 years. Bringing it a little closer to home over the last 1,000 years, you can see the ups and downs and swings in temperature. No SUVs driving around, no coal-fired power plants or natural gas-burning power plants to give us electricity back then, yet the temperature rose and fell in a natural fashion. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. So much deception going on with these temperatures now. It's a political agenda.
nothing more. Science has been thrown under the bus 